Logging up with snow, any mowing pad, you can buy them at your local carrier supply. Or take WD-40 and squirt in their feet. That WD-40 absorbing the sole of their foot and it release as you go along and it'll slough that snow out and it won't hold up. That's a quick method of doing it. Pam works the same way. <coughs> Moving on, what we're going to do this morning is we're going to teach you just a few ways to pack, a hundred different ways to pack different gear in the mountains, in the desert, in Afghanistan, or wherever you may be. We do nothing different than what you folks probably already know. Uh, packing's been, been around since Genghis Khan. That's what made him very successful. He could take his logistical supplies with him, and he could just hop from village to village and conquer the village and uh, imprison people or put them in as indentured servants and keep moving on. Not much in packing has evolved much different. There's some new things that came on the market uh, back in the early 1900s. The Decker Pack Title was designed for the Forest Service. Um, personally, I like the Decker Pack Title better than the Salt Bus. I can get rid of some gear. Gear that my Marine was probably losing a combat T here in the target indicator. That's why we teach how to pack with the Decker. All right. <coughs> the first thing we're going to teach you how to do is man up a load. Right here in the center, we use milk crates for training, not because the rings are weak, because we've got a bunch of them from the chow hall. <laughs> First thing you're going to do is lay out your tarp, kind of like you have it laid here. You're going to put your load on there diagonally. You're going to start from the bottom end, you're going to flip up your tarp. You're just going to make a Christmas package out of it, basically. And all of you guys, I know you've been wrapping presents for your wife, so pay attention. This is important. You can man it and call it a Christmas package. It looks good. The one reason why we use tarps on most of our packing is if you're in Afghanistan, you're, you're hauling 50 caliber machine guns or ammunition, medical supplies, uh, sensitive comm gear. We cover it up so they can't see what we're packing. All it is is a big clump on the side of a donkey or a mule and they can't really report on what we're packing in, in country. Uh, another reason is the waterproofing. Uh, you're going to develop a rain flap on the top, pull it down, flip it under, and we're going to take a rope and go all the way around the long way. Then you're going to put three horizontal wraps around it, half inches. And if everybody didn't know, I talked to a bunch of people here that packed last night. Packing is nothing more than half inches. You can tie a half inch, you can pack an animal. No matter what animal it is, it could be a goat, a llama, a camel, a horse, it doesn't matter. A mule. Now you're going to see us do some things that you probably do a little bit more efficient, like twisting stuff. Um, We've sat down and actually went to do this. We found the easiest way to take a person to the swamps of Florida that's never seen a horse except on TV, maybe triggered with Fort Rogers, to teach him how to tie a rope around the package. It's the easiest way for him to remember. And this is how we teach all our people. They don't forget it. It's easy for them to do. They don't, they're not flipping ropes around and trying to tie weird knots and all this other stuff. <coughs> Side of it, you're going to just take round turns around your horizontal wrap. That's going to keep your ropes in place. It's not going to slide off if you run into a tree or get caught on brush. If you're in a hurry, you can put two, one on top, one on the bottom, just keep going. Yes, ma'am. I can't hear you. Soft pack versus hard pack. You can manny anything. We manny, we manny dead people. Not that that's nice, but you can manny anything under the sun. All that is is horse blanket. It's going to 
going to be a top load on a set of panniers. But you can manny anything under the sun. The, the key to mannying is you want to press it down and keep it as tight as possible. And one reason we use, other reason we use milk crates, it makes a nice package so they can see exactly what they're cutting and it's not sucking into whatever real soft load is. Does that, that answer your question then? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, once we get our many loads done, we're going to go to our mule car load. It's about a 13 year old Belgian cross. Came out of Montana. And never make eye contact. He's mean. Listen. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to drop your swing rope. Uh, when you're packing with many loads, you'll have two swing ropes about 30 foot long hanging from your crossbow. Okay, so you take a 30 foot piece of cotton rope, put an eye splice on one end and back splice the other end so it doesn't come apart. You got a swing rope or a manny rope if you want to use it for that. So, hold on. Look down here. I can't talk so to start with, Sergeant Frechet is going to set, show you how to set up a basket hitch on that side, and Sergeant Giles will do it on this side for these people over here. So pull on your rope up. <coughs> Basically, you're going to take your ice splice, you're going to go around the front buck, or hoop, metal hoop. Just tie it on, run it back through itself, bring it down tight. You're going to go on the outside and back through the back buck and down in between them, underneath that rope. What you're going to create is a basket. Once we get our basket built, we get it laid out here, now comes our load. Some safety requirements, a lot of people have some food for thought here, but I've seen Marines drag down a dirt road with their leg tied up in that rope hanging there. Either lay it up on the animal's neck, one side, or the other side lay it up on his rump if he's good with it. Or throw it up underneath him so he's getting tangled up in himself. Just keep it out from your feet or don't have your hands and stuff. So you're going to lift your loads up, and what you're trying to do is create an A above this, the top corners of that. Uh, your two packs will touch on the top and you're going to create an A. The bottom part of your basket is going to be flipping up over. You want to get up about the top one third of your load. You're running into the rope that's laying under the mule, you start sucking that down or pulling it down. And what you need to do if you've got some real soft load, start rocking that load from side to side and keep pulling on that running end. And it's going to suck that rope down into whatever you're packing going to make it a nice tighter load. Once you get good and tight, we're not too high on the right side. <laughs> you're, going take that, you're going to take that running into the rope. You're going to go up to that cross rope that you just put on there on your basket. Go underneath it, pull it out, and you're going to tie, what is it? A half inch. Pack is nothing more than half inches, in my opinion. It only means something at our base, by the way. <laughs> Once you get your half hitch tied, go ahead and put what over top of that bike? The half hitch. That secures it off. And if it does get caught on a tree branch or a limb or whatever, it's not going to unloosen your load and pull it out and then your panty load drop. Once you get to this point, and let me back up a little. We teach all of our guys to work right-handed. For the simple fact, if I'm on the side of a mountain in Afghanistan or Iraq or wherever, and I have to check this load, I can do it by feel. Everything runs to the right for us, because I'm right-handed. I'm not left-handed, and the people that are, I'm sorry. <laughs> so you're going to go to the right, you're going to come underneath that load with your rope, and you're going to come back up, go back underneath itself, and you just created just another half inch is all it is. Pull all your slack out of that. Well, <laughs> Once you get all the slack out, you're going to suck it down tight and you're going to go through the ring in your double ring cinch that you should be running because it serves a great purpose. Now, once you get both of these done, you wait for the other guys to catch up, John. <laughs> Once you get there, you should both be pulling on that rope at the same time. That way it equally tensions your scent with that second ring. Once you get to that point, you come back up to the first loop that you created. 
And you're going to pull that down and you're going to tie a half hit. Okay, once we get this all created and it's tied on here, you do a little nifty rope management to clean everything up, tuck it in so it's not getting caught on sagebrush. And there were some folks burning that last night because it was sagebrush. I don't know. They're out here somewhere. What did you say? Once we got our load, we rock it, make sure it's balanced, and we're good. We're ready to go down the trail, and that load should ride for 30, 40 miles, however far you want to go. The question was how big were the manning? The question was how big were the manning? We run eight by eight square. Hemmed at the sides because I hate them coming apart. You can run seven by eight, you can buy them all the way up to nine by nine. I like the eight by eight, you ain't got too much stuff to mess with, tuck in, or get caught on stuff. Run eight by eight generally. Your, uh, the first uh, Manny rope is about 30 foot long, 25 to 30 foot. You can make them as long as you want, to use them for the uh, but you run into a problem with yes. a bunch of stuff hanging there and get a problem for us. Try to minimize that. We carry extra rope for our uh, night line. We don't use any of our many ropes. We're trying to do We have extra rope on our base that we use for mountaineering. Okay. Uh, once it's built in serviceable, we uh, need to just go away. So I you know retain the, uh, that. And that way I don't care up much for packing. Oh yeah. Yes, ma'am. She's sitting in somebody's lap right now. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey. Or what do we tie off hey, hey, of? Hey, hey, hey. Uh, uh, hey, okay. one, two, uh, in the Sierra Nevada, you got three. I want my high line above their head, at least three feet. So I have somebody shinny up the tree, and we put one up high enough so they don't get caught. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. No, ma'am. I'm just trying to give you a round off. In Afghanistan, I'll put a ground line on. I'll take picket pins, and I'll run them across the ground. Animals I may have, and I'll run that rope through the picket rings, and then I'll tie individual tying points in between the picket pins. And I run a three foot picket pin. These guys have to drive in the ground. <laughs> well, these are uh, 81 millimeter mortar casing, uh, artillery mortar casing. Empty. It's just a round object, it's a barrel, it could be anything that's around, it doesn't matter. So we're going to set our saddle up a little bit different. We're going to go tie it on just with a swing rope like we've got. We're going to go take a, a bike to that front buck and down on the front side of it. Just like Sergeant for Chase got here. Let me get out of your way. Once we get that front loop through there, we're going to come through straight back through the back loop with another one. We're going to keep that pigtail running right down the center as best we can. Once we get to here, we're going to put a load on it. And by the way, the guy over here that's got the barrel donkeys or mules, he's got it figured out. He doesn't have to go far. They don't kick and they don't bite. You don't have to feed them. <laughs> Whoever, raise your hand. Who is that? I need a herd of them. Perfect. I don't have to get out of my recliner. I'm an old guy. I'm retired. I'm wore out. <laughs> Once we get to this point here, we're going to put our load on there. One loop goes over the back. One goes over the front. And you're going to suck that cylindrical object all the way up into that iron hoop. pack this stuff lower you can put multiple slings on it if you will and you can put four or five of these on each side well probably not four or five of these because with a round in there it's fairly heavy about 99 pounds um, but you can put two on each side for a big old mule that you're not going very far once we get that we're going to come up over top of the center of our round object excuse me 
we're gonna go that cross rope that went through the uh, hoop. We're gonna go underneath it. We're gonna tie what? A half hitch. Everything's a half hitch. <coughs> Once we get a half hitch done, we put a half hitch on top of the loop just to secure it. Everything's finished off with a half hitch. Then you're gonna take the running into the rope, all that stuff you got laying on the mule, and you're gonna go through the ring back on the cinch again. Once you go back through the ring, both of them pull equally on the cinch, so you're sucking it down equally on both sides. Come back up through that loop you created on the first tie. Come back through there. And once you get through there, both of them together, they're gonna to pull straight down on it. They're gonna tie it off with what? If you learn nothing today, you're gonna to learn half it. What's that? You gotta go back and forth. He's got to be working. They're tough. They crawl underneath, over the top. They get that boot. <laughs> Once we get that all tied off, then you're going to finish it off, do a little rope management, come up. What you can do, John, if you'll show them, stick that rope through that loop that's created if you made it big enough. Pull it right back down through, and it'll just hang there. And all you got to do is pull that back up out of the loop, and it'll come off, and pull it back out. And you're back where you started. <laughs> Any questions on a barrel hit? Pretty simple. Yes, sir. We no longer have The question is when we're packing some of our military uh, weapon systems, uh, do you man it before you pack it on there or do you leave it exposed? It, in, a, in a perfect world, I guess, you'd want to leave it exposed because uh, it's easier to put into action. If you will. But in a reality world, you don't want them to see what you're doing, so you can man it up, make it as tight as possible, and then pack it later. And you can do a barrel hitch, you can do a basket hitch on a number of different things. The reason we didn't bring 50 pounds is I have to find an offer down here to go with so we didn't bring 50 cows in more than we Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No. Okay. Well, it happened over time. It has started out a little bit tighter, uh, but over time that all settled. Yeah. And it just tightened the saddle up a little bit more. Right there that's going over where we cut our mules in half. When we start well, down the trail, cut them in half. I don't want the saddle yeah. to move at all. Uh, in a, a couple food for thought, we teach people that's never handled life. Ever. This is the first time they've ever seen a mule. And they're afraid they're going to hurt the mule. Well, they're going to hurt the mule if they don't tighten the saddle up properly. And that saddle stands, gets up underneath, and the mule goes to buck and kicks them all over the head. And then I got to call care of the so I teach you right out the gate, cut that mule in half, we'll, we'll adjust it and go wrong from there. Now, I'm not telling you to cut your mules in half. I personally, you know, if you pack your load right to get a even distribution of weight, you can leave the sand on and that load well not off. Uh, you snug it up, it'll ride all day long. But for the people that we have to keep, I have to kind of go overboard on some things. Uh, and you'll see our mules ain't hurting uh, at all. They're kind of bruised up and beat up. Uh, but folks that we have to keep, we don't hit them. We don't hit them. Don't, don't beat them. Uh, but if you look at the back, the saddle's on, the spot's on, but it just beat it up a little bit. Uh, if it's really warm enough when we pack and share the bat, I'll take buckets of cold water and cool their back after we get done packing for the day. And so I got the heat out of their back and it'll help with the white spots. I hate the white spots, but there's not a lot I can do about it. Because, it, you know, we have 48 students at one time or a quarter. There's six instructors and myself. It's kind of hard to get in for a long time. So how Okay, the next load we're going to teach is just uh, 
a set of panniers. You probably all have them. You probably all pack them. All we got in this load here, you need to drop your You probably, a lot of, raise your hands. How many people use lash lines? I'm going to show you a way to do it. You might have to buy a Decker saddle. <laughs> I don't have stock in Decker saddle, by the way. Uh, but you get rid of a piece of equipment here. All right, so we're going to show you. We'll show you two hitches here that you can do a lot of good stuff. With. So before you hang your panniers, you're going to set up a basket hitch with a swing rope, just like we did with the panty load. Once you get to that point, your panniers are going to go up, your leather straps, your hang straps are going to go around the hoop. If they're heavy load, the offside guy can buckle it up while the onside guy holds it and so on and so forth. Once we get our panier tucked up, one of the packers are going to go to the back and make sure they're hanging level from side to side, maybe rock the, the load so it settles itself a little bit. What we're teaching our Marines to look for here is the bottom of the panniers, make sure they're hanging straight across. We've already weighed the load so we know the load's balanced. We just want to make sure that saddle's square on his back, it's not going to pinch his withers anywhere. And you want to do that with all your loads. Once we get to this point, your top load's going to go on. We talked a little bit about top loads. I hate them. Uh, the higher you get that load up, the more chance it is you're going to roll that saddle because it's going back and forth instead of front and aft when they're walking. That load's rocking side to side instead of forward and aft, front and back. So if you can get away with never packing a top load, I would suggest that. Now, there's probably some packers out here that have to do that for their business. <laughs> Once we get this set up, we're going to throw on a pack tarp on top of it, wrap it around, tuck it in, make it look like a nice Christmas present. And I would suggest on all your top loads, you manage your top loads before you use them. What you're trying to do is compress that load to where it's a manageable load and nothing moves independently from the whole load, if that makes sense. Everybody is talking to each other, make sure we got it squared up and we're not looking like a bunch of hobos going down the trail. <laughs> Start in the back, roll that all back up under the tree there. Roll it. There you go. Stuff it under the tree. You want to do that in the front and back so you can keep the, an eyeball on your hoops or your cross bucks on your saw buck. So when you're riding down a trail and you look at it, you can look at each mule, and if those cross bucks are still on his withers in the center, you know you got a good balanced load and it's not spinning on you. If it's off to one side, you got to stop and, and packing 101 starts again on the side hip. Once you get to this point, you're going to throw that cross loop on that basket hitch up over top of your top load. All we're going to tie is a box hitch here using swing ropes off a Decker saddle. That's all it is. Once you're here, you're going to tighten that down. You want to suck it down as tight as you can. Once you get it all tightened up there, you're going to bring that rope up out in front of your panniers. You're running in. You're going to go underneath your, your cross rope on top. Sometimes you need a step ladder. Then equally, equally together, you're going to pull that down. Pull it down, get as tight as you can get it. Once you get it there, you're going to tie it off with a half hit around itself.
Once we get to this point, you're going to go around that pannier with a half hitch. Then you're going to go back down to that double ring and come back up and tie off to the loop that you created on your first tie. That's why they call it a mule. But on top, we're going to spin that twice. We're going to intertwine that rope twice. You don't want to get it nice and tight because then you can't spin it. It doesn't spread that diamond out. Once we get to that point, we're going to take a running in. We're going to go up and underneath. Underneath the diamond. <laughs> Once we get to this point, and this does need two packers, or you get your load, whoever asked that question, it'll be all off center. So you're going to pull equally, equally, guys, on that diamond. Whoa. One more time, John. There we go. Now you're going to tie it off with a half inch. Whoever's a fan of the single diamond or double diamond, this works just as good. I'm a fan of them, but I can't tie them anymore since I got out. <laughs> we don't teach it because it's kind of easy. Oh, no, we don't. Once you get to this point, you're going to go around that pannier with a half inch. You're going to go back up to that loop, come down through that loop, go to your ring, and then tie it back off. Money's on the big dog. Okay, <laughs> hey, once we got it tied off, it's ready to go down the trail. Uh, it's easy to untie, never tightens up, it's only a half hitch, and, and you're off and going. That's the four hitches that we teach at the Mount Warfare Training Center for the Marines, or sailors, or Army people, soldiers going to Afghanistan. All right. 
Is there any questions on the hitches we teach, how we teach them, or how we tie them? I would love for you to come down and play with the animal and tie them yourself, but I was told that's illegal. Can't do it. Sorry. Come to the base, we'll teach you how to do it. You have to join. Over there. There's a few of you out here that need parental consent. Very, very few. All right, the question was asked, talk a little bit about our program. And I'm more than happy to. I'll two drones more. Yeah, I think our program's very important to today's age. Uh, new technology doesn't win wars. Uh, it helps us win wars. I think we have to go back and, and look at history. Uh, to move some supplies, move some logistical concerns, uh, get to where they are. And they are the places that helicopters can't fly. Uh, there are places that Humvees or seven-ton trucks can't drive. There's no road. And if there is a road, it, it, it's, it's, it's the worst road you'd ever imagine. You know, here in America, we've got it fairly easy. Our roads are well maintained. We've got heavy equipment to keep those roads maintained. We spend a lot of money on that. In Afghanistan, they don't have an infrastructure like that. And whatever's cut out of the road or out of the hillside, they call it a road, and it's usually just a trip. And that's where the donkeys and the mules and the Marines and sailors and soldiers that are packing come into play. Uh, we move, we do nothing more than teach an alternate means of logistical transportation. That's it. Uh, we're moving good. We're free. Bottom line. We freight gear from one point to another point. Hopefully the gear is needed. They put it to good use and it helps us win the war. Uh, our program was started in 1983 during the Afghan-Russian War. Uh, back in the mid 80s, the CIA bought over 10,000 mules and they took them to Afghanistan. In less than three years, they were dead. Uh, some were shot to eat. To eat. Uh, some fell over dead from disease. They couldn't sustain themselves on the nutrition that was provided over there because they didn't pack a bunch of alfalfa hay with them or pellets or grain or any of that. They went over there and they had to survive on what was there. Uh, the donkeys that are there, they're raised there, they're born there, they live there, they can sustain on what is there. They're immune to the diseases. We don't even know what to vaccinate bottom line because they don't even know how to pronounce the name of the disease even if they know they have it. So our animals People walk right in the middle of Can you see the camp? Hmm? Can you keep an eye on the camp? Yeah. And representatives of the different BCHC units, Antelope Valley, Mendo Lake, San Diego, and Mid Valley. Yeah, I'm not 
We would like to thank Mick Valley, especially for carrying the stars and stripes over there. Big flags, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Not without difficulty. Not a battery on everything. Just as a point of interest, you can see that Mustang in the back. That's by Jackie Grimani. That one will be optioned for the next one. Looking for a Mustang? You can check that one out. You're now official mountain man. Can you get us all in? 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 Can you